And this is a video of my recently restored Lisa 210 with a profile hard drive and an also recently rebuilt keyboard. The uh, foam inserts were replaced on that. Replaced all of the foam inserts as well as the mylar on the foam inserts since they were completely uh, deteriorated and worn down. The Lisa itself um, is made up of two different Lisa 210s. I got one on Craigslist and I bought one from a, a fellow that I met at a vintage computer show. The power supply on the original Lisa was bad, so I replaced that with uh, the one from Craigslist. And the mouse was bad, I replaced that with the one from Craigslist and got managed to get one working Lisa 210 out of the deal. The profile hard drive spun up, but the, uh, whatever software was on it was not booting. So initially I bought a uh, X profile hard drive, which is currently installed in the machine and remove the front cover and you can see the pro the X profile hard drive is right over here currently it has Lisa OS installed in it I left the original floppy drive in there which is still working um, so that's installed the rest of the bay had a, a widget hard drive in there on the original machine also which is right here and that's been removed I tried to work the widget hard drive and restore that and that is not working so that's not currently in the machine so I might get it a chance to mess with that a little bit more in the future, but for right now, that's not in the machine. So I replaced the front cover. I'm going to show a boot now into Lisa OS, and this is off the X Profile hard drive. I'll go ahead and let this boot up in real time. It's very quiet. I disconnected the fan. The X Profile doesn't need the fan running. Um, I also managed to get the original Profile hard drive running with an original copy of Lisa OS, and I'll boot off of that later so you can see the difference in the booting and how much noise the Profile makes. Let's come up, did the system tests. Apologize for the raster image on the video. You don't have any way to uh, eliminate that, so. This is Lisa OS 3.1. You see the desktop coming up. Go ahead and open up the uh, internal hard drive. This is a copy of Lisa OS that came with the X Profile hard drive when I bought it. Launched some of the software so you can see this is the calculator application coming up. Here's the clock. Both of those are running. Go ahead and put them away. I'll set the clock aside or save it and put it away. See the calculator working. Go ahead and put that away. Also came with uh, most of the uh, Lisa applications. Got Lisa Draw, Lisa Graph, Lisa Calc, um, Lisa Write. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up piece of Lisa Wright paper that I had already made. And there's the Lisa Wright paper. It's like a normal uh, word process that we're all used to. See the keyboard's working pretty well again. It was completely shot before the rebuild. I'm going to go ahead and save this and put it away. And I'm going to put the internal hard disk away too. And we'll take a look at the preferences app. Pretty simple preferences app. For those of you used to modern Macintoshes, this is very, very different from what you see in OS X. It's only a few preferences that you can set. You 
convenience items such as a screen contrast, speaker volume, repeating keys, mouse click. It's a way to connect different devices to your serial and expansion slots. You can see what this one was configured. I do not have an image writer. You can install device software and remove device software. That's pretty much it. That's Lisa OS. I'm going to go ahead and shut that down. That's shut down by a push of the power button again. And it'll turn off. As I said later, I'll boot Lisa OS off the profile drive, but right now I'm going to switch into Mac Works and boot from that using the X profile drive, and I'll show you that. So the front panel removed again, and I'm going to swap out the compact flash card that has the Lisa OS in it and replace it with uh, Mac's, MacWorks um, 1.0.18 also in compact flash put that in and I'm going to replace the front panel and we'll restart Starting the machine. Again, it's very quiet coming up because there's no fan, no hard drives running, no floppy drive spinning. Run through the system tests again. CPU memory I.O. It's loading Mac works. I don't have the conversion kit on here, so everything looks a little bit taller than you might see on a regular Macintosh, but it runs MacWorks very nicely. I installed a couple other little pieces of software in here that I acquired, uh, Mac Prolog and uh, Lisp. Uh, maybe I'll make separate videos for those at another time. But there's a couple little pieces of application software on here that you can run, Mac Paint, and a few other things. Work pretty much the way you would expect. I also have Word Perfect on here. A lot of the standard Macintosh type things, clock, calculator. Overall, you can see it runs quite a bit faster than Lisa OS ran on the same hardware. You can see the control panel. Very similar to what uh, you're used to seeing on the old Macs. And that's MacWorks Plus booting up on the Lisa 210. This you can shut down from the software. I'll do a shutdown. And shuts down quite a bit faster too. Another piece of software I wanted to show you, I just swapped it out on the X Profile. Another compact flash card has the Xenix operating system installed on it. Xenix was an early SEO Microsoft product. Um, ran on the Lisa, ran on a bunch of other platforms also, but I have it on the Lisa. Um, and it's essentially an early version of Unix. I have that installed on Compact Flash for the X profile drive. I'm seeing it booting up into Xenix now. And I was also able to install the developer tools, which is essentially a C compiler, and um, the text processing tools. I might make separate videos to show a little bit more of those at another time. Just going to show it booting up into uh, Xenix right now. Gives a little bit of information about the Lisa boot up here, like what, what's in your slots, how much uh, memory is remaining, how much is being used by root and swap partitions. This gives you the option now to control D and do a regular login or just hit return to do a um, login to the root since there's no password on any of the accounts on here right now but you can set passwords so I have a normal account I'm going to go ahead and do a control D so that I can log into a normal account I'll just bypass the new system time and date Log 
log in with my account name. And it gives us a uh, Unix prompt. Do all the normal type Unix commands. There's not too much in this account on here right now. But you can run mail, you can run all the normal type Unix things that you would be used to using. As I mentioned, there's a C compiler on it. Uh, I don't have much software on it right now, but I do have one small piece of code that I tried just for a test, and I can show that in another video. Same with the text processing. If you're familiar with LaTeX, it's similar to the way LaTeX works. It's a markup type language. But you can also super user, and then you can halt the system or do a shutdown. I've been doing halt sys, but shutdown's probably a little bit cleaner. But that cleans things up in the disks and exit out of Xenix. So those are the three different operating systems I have on the Lisa right now. I have Lisa OS, MacWorks Plus, and Xenix. I'm going to go ahead and shut down again and configure this to use the profile drive and boot up showing you how this boots on the profile drive. Okay, so here's a clip of the uh, profile hard drive booting up the Lisa. I already turned the profile on. You can hear it spinning up. I don't know if they're all this noisy, but mine is. Um, it's up to speed. It's indicated by the red ready light. So I'm going to go ahead and start the Lisa up and show a boot using the profile drive. I'm going to bring up the boot menu so that I can select the right uh, port for this because I still have the X profile drive installed and I don't want it to boot off of that. Here's the boot menu. I'm going to select slot 6. That's where the external profile drive is. And you can see by the light flashing on the drive that it's now booting from that drive. It's, you can also see the lights flashing on the X profile drive inside here, but it's not booting from that currently. However, when the system boots, the X profile drive is also going to appear on the de desktop because it's a valid uh, Lisa OS disk, so it will, it will also come up on the desktop. It's not really that much slower than the um, X profile drive. Quite a bit noisier though. The X profile is a little bit faster. So there's the icon for the internal or for the profile hard drive, and then that's the X profile drive up there. We'll open this up, and you can see this is an exact clone of the compact flash card from the X profile drive. So everything in here looks exactly the same as what I had on the X profile drive same positions and everything, it's an exact clone. So that's the original profile hard drive booting the Lisa. And push the button to shut it down. feel free to send me an email and I'll do the best I can to answer them.